Well, unfortunately, it's become painfully obvious to all of us the last four weeks that my premise in the second video of the Return of the Ancient God series is a valid concern. It's been become very clear <laughs> over the last month that all the king's horses and all the king's men simply are unable to deal with a nuclear dragon that has escaped its shackles. And, and rem this is under relatively controlled and benign conditions. We've been at the luxury of being able to send in experts from the United States and Russia and many other nations to assist. We've had the luxury of being able to utilize uh, American military resources in the region to assist. And I just read an article a few days ago that stated even with, at, even with all of these resources bearing down on this site, that this is looking like a hundred year cleanup. This is going to take a hundred years to clean up and could take a year or two to actually just lock the site down and stop the bleeding of nuclear radiation across the planet. Now you can use your imagination and without trouble see that under more inclement conditions this site would just be abandoned and it would just continue spewing radiation until the fires literally exhausted themselves of fuel. And at that site currently, there are 6,000 nuclear fuel rods. 6,000. Enough plutonium to kill every single man, woman, and child on the planet is the word that I have at that one location. And there are 500 nuclear power plants just in Europe. There are 500 nuclear power plants just in North America. In fact, I believe just in the United States, actually. Now, just two nights ago, I was working late in the garage, and after the historic storm of 2010, I did a little research on our backup power systems, and I had known for years that scientists have been warning of a impending EMP strike, a coronal mass ejection that the sun throws at the earth periodically. And scientists have been, you know, in the media and, and, and on your television for years now warning that we're due for another large EMP strike. We had a very large one in 1859. We had a very large one in 1921, I believe. And those, that strike was enough energy that it actually lit telegraphs across the United States and I believe the world on fire. There was also a small EMP in 1989 that wreaked some havoc on our grid and it was a, in the midst of that research that I decided that in, we really needed to be fully off the grid capable. And that our standard generators were completely vulnerable to, the, to an, this impending EMP that we are told should arrive any time now. So I went out and did a little research and ended up buying an antique British engine that runs solely on manual power, has no electronic components whatsoever. And I did this specifically so that if we were to see an EMP strike that knocked down the grid, we would continue to have electrical power capabilities. Now the other night, about three o'clock in the morning, I'm working in the garage and I'm knee deep in engine parts and wrenches and I suddenly had, you know, like a eureka moment where 
with the nuclear catastrophe in Japan fresh on my mind and with the British Listeroid engine standing there in front of me, I realized that if we have an impending major EMP strike that is due, and scientists tell us that, what's going to happen to all these nuclear power plant cooling facilities during that strike? What's going to happen to the cooling systems at nuclear power plants all over the planet if we have this major EMP strike? Now, nuclear power plants, sure, they have their backup diesel generators, but those diesel generators are not manual generators. Those are electronic generators. And even if they were manual generators, how are they going to have fuel to operate for the, you know, scientists are telling us we could be down for a year or two if, if and when this EMP strike hits that, that uh, scientist Dr. Kaku is stating is due in 2012 at the next solar cycle. Now, when that EMP strike hits, automobiles are not going to operate, at least not any modern automobiles. And there's going to be no way to ship fuel around for some time until the grid can be put back up. So, what's going to happen to the 1,000 or 2,000 nuclear power plants and nuclear facilities around the world when this strike comes and this EMP knocks down the entire grid. You could have 12 Fukushimas. You could have 50 Fukushimas. You could have 500 Fukushimas. And who's going to come put out that fire? Who's going to come rescue those nuclear power plants? with the grid down, with trucks and automobiles, airplanes, non-functional. 